What's going on, guys? Uh, in my recent upload yesterday, I kind of went in about thanking all of you for listening and whatnot. Uh, but I got an opportunity to have a few guys in the podcast, uh, one whom I'm about to have on, who I'll welcome in a second here. Um, I decided to do a Saturday podcast. I haven't done that in a long time, but I figured you guys deserved it because you know I haven't really been a, very consistent with the uploading. Um, so I want to get back on that. I want to get back to that three a week. So today we have Chad Smith, a uh, an angler who fishes the uh, the opens, the bass opens, crazy tournament angler. Uh, he's very very smart, very mm-hmm. versatile. Uh, he fishes all over the place. Um, he's very well known. There's a couple different things that I want to get in with him on uh, when I have him on, talk to him about. So I'm pretty excited. Hope you guys are too, and I hope you enjoy. All right. We are recording. Chad Smith, what's going on, my man? What's going on, man? How's how you doing? Doing well, doing well. Just waiting for, you know, this weird windstorm here in New York to uh, blow over. But it looks like, judging by the sun coming into your room, it looks like it's you got some nice weather by you. Yeah, it, it's a little colder today, but the sun's shining and uh, just kind of going through a self-quarantine kind of deal with all this <laughs> corona, COVID-19 COVID going on. Uh, it's crazy stuff. Yes. Yeah, you've been out in the lake at all, or you've just been quarantining at home? I haven't really lately. Um, I mean, everything's frozen where I'm at right now, so yeah. it's just kind of like, honestly, just tinkering with tackle and like trying to stay sane. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were talking offline, uh, for those listening, about uh, Rich Lindgren, and I've been teasing him still because I've been getting out on open water, and he's still got frozen ice, and he, yeah, <laughs> you know, he's, he's been, yeah, he's been getting bugged about it, but... uh yeah. That sucks. I hope it. I hope it melts for you guys soon. I don't know. Are you an ice fisherman at all? Uh, not a whole lot. I'll go with some buddies. I actually don't have much equipment for it. So like, if I got a buddy, who's like, let's go, and that's cool. But otherwise, I pretty much hibernate, work as much as I can, and uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit earlier of the year ice off for us up here. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a weird winter. I mean, for you guys, it seemed pretty normal, but for us, yeah. over here, it was. I mean, it, we didn't get ice until mid January, and it's already yeah. gone weeks ago. Yeah. So, it's, for us open water fishermen, we love it. We're not complaining. So yeah. We're all, right? <laughs> a couple more months to open water fish, fine with us. But yeah. uh, before we get too into it, uh, if you want to go and just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, um, you know, who got you into fishing, how that all started, and the whole story. Yeah. No. So I mean. Really, honestly, ever since I can remember, like, fishing's kind of just been something that's I've been in love with. Um, when I was, like, really young, like, I guess, I don't even know, probably three years old or so, my parents, or my dad and my grandpa were kind of the ones who got me corely into that. Um, and then just from there, like, spending a week or two up at my cabin during the summers when I was younger, uh, I'd be fishing all the time, just then. And I really kind of developed, like, a love for actual bass fishing. Like, it's the only fish I really wanted to catch. So that was kind of just, it's just goofy how it all works out. And then as I got older, it just started to transition into, um, you know, people find each other with similar interests. So, like, started meeting some local fishermen around home, around Minnetonka. And um, I just kind of was able to jump in with some local guys who, like, were older guys looking to, you know, help out the little kid who's, interested in fishing they kind of got me more um intrigued into that tournament scene and stuff like that and uh from there it really just kind of took off to you know when i was looking to graduate high school then looking into like the college fishing programs and um also i had a buddy hit me up about going to fish in a bassmaster open as a co-angler and um that that was really like the turning point for me to like see how big of a scene this really can be or like see it firsthand and i actually missed my high school graduation to go fish this uh bassmaster open as a co-angler for my first time and and i mean i i didn't do so hot in the tournament i finished like 145th or something but just to like be around the guys who i'd been seeing on tv um also just to meet like a ton of different locals and just you know to get in a boat with a new person that i hadn't been in it just really opened my eyes to like how much I can maybe learn doing that fishing as a co-angler and then also um you know it just really got me interested to trying to get myself to that level and yeah. um and to you know try to climb the climb the ladder <laughs> yeah I mean it's 
I mean, I, I've never been a co-angler before, so I don't know 100% what it's like. But from my standpoint, the way I look at it, it can be kind of tough because you're at the mercy of the actual boater, correct? Definitely. Definitely. You're yeah. totally like ex exactly what you said. You're just completely at their mercy. You know, you don't make any decisions of where to go, do anything like that. You're just kind of along for the ride and trying to catch fish. The way I looked at it was trying to catch fish that they weren't targeting in the areas that they were. So, oh. um and it was just a really good learning experience. You know, you get to be in a boat with a new person each competition day. I was fortunate to have someone to travel with um, and also go practice with and kind of learn learn the water, get a few baits or something that kind of are working better for me to get some bites on the tournament day. Um, and just kind of be prepared for any kind of scenario that I might run into. But you get to just learn so much. You get to travel the country for a much cheaper expense than fishing as like a boater or a pro. Yeah. And, um, and just get to see a whole lot and just learn a ton. I kind of use that as my school. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, mean, you, I can't imagine, you know, being around that environment for a long period of time. You, you got to, it's, I feel like it's good because you can obviously soak all the information, but at the same time, it's got to be pretty tough to, you know, stay focused of bringing everything in, not getting caught up in the environment and still being able right. to sit back and focus on what your goal is, you know? Right not getting totally. caught in all the lust of everything going on like oh look exactly. at the names these guys under these boats all the cool stuff but trying right. to you know get back to the nitty-gritty stuff so it's totally it's kind of interesting it's that's one thing about a co-angler too that i think is it's tough because it's not like your finish isn't a testament to your talents you know it's mm -hmm. a it's what you make of where your boater goes so like okay. You could be the greatest angler of the world, but you can finish dead last because your boater doesn't know what the heck they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. That's why exactly. it's kind of it's, it can be tough. That's one yeah. thing. It's kind of like turning me off. Because people are like, you know, they've. I mean, I've been told multiple times to go do it. You know, go experience it. And while I'd go for the experience, I'm sitting there like, I don't want to pay 400 bucks to have some guy drag me around the mud and not yeah. care at all. Like it's. No. I, I, I feel that for sure. It, it's definitely a tough time. And I mean, it's actually interesting. Like what it took me until I think it was my seventh Bassmaster Open to get my first check. And I was about to go home broke as a joke. And like literally we were going, we were at Lake Erie and going down to Table Rock immediately after the tournament was over. And if I wasn't, if I didn't get a check at that event, I was actually going to be going home with another guy from Minnesota just to drive back because I can't afford to go to the next one. And I finished 31st, got like 470 bucks or something like that. And I was able to go to that last event for the year, but didn't get a check there. And I went home with my tail between my legs, but um, it just kind of helped me look at the whole picture again. And, you know, I entered one more division the next year and that's when kind of the t like gears started turning and I started to kind of learn how to compete as a co-angler a little better and um yeah just kind of yeah <laughs> I mean no one ever goes into fishing especially the tournament scene and does well every single time that they compete right. you right. know unless, yeah, unless you're Jacob Wheeler in the past two three years where you somehow yeah what whatever beyond the point no, you yeah it, but I think a story that is really cool that kind of is in line with what you just said was um, I was listening to Ike live with uh, not like live. It was Bass U with yeah. Hank Cherry. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to that one. I but hadn't yet, but yeah, he spoke about the, the opens and how his first one where he literally finished like second to last or something like that. Yeah. And he just got destroyed in it to the point where uh, it wasn't the opens. It was FLW where he just got destroyed, and then he literally went home, took a hiatus from fishing because he lost his job, all this stuff, and then took him, gave himself two years to get back into fishing, and that's yeah. kind of when it, things picked up. You yeah. know, he, you know, he obviously he just won a classic. You know, so it's yeah, like no, for sure. <laughs> You, you got to start somewhere. It's basically my, the, my long route of what I'm trying to get at. So it's yeah, no, totally. It's it's a long journey, and everyone's got their story of how they kind of, you know, find their success. But it's definitely a roller coaster of things that. Oh yeah. Um, you know, it's just perseverance. It's just it's one of those sports that if you just keep at it and you don't give up, and I mean, just like anything, but um, it's it's just a really big perseverance kind of sport. But yeah. And it is, like you said, like right there, you said it's just kind of like anything, but at the same time, it's so different than anything yeah. else because 
you know, in basketball, it's up to you whether how good you shoot, how good you perform, or how yeah. you compete against who you're playing against. Yeah. But fast fishing is like you have these guys to compete against. You got yourself, your own brain to compete against. Yeah. And I've mentioned this so many times in the show, but like, you're at the end of the day, you're competing against the bass. Yeah. That's, I mean, you and they are have trying, own, exactly. You're trying to control another living creature, like that. It yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's a very interesting sport. <laughs> that and like you know, one thing that's pretty similar is like hunting, and I know it's being out by yeah. you guys. Yeah. You know, you can't control where that deer wants to go. I mean, you can right. kind of strategize where they're going to be at certain points, but it's like, at the end of the day, it's their mind. They might be like, all right, I don't feel like going this route today. I'm going to go yeah. backwards, you know? It's, totally. You're, like, educated you said, guessing in a way. <laughs> yeah. You can't, be, you can't look at a textbook and be like, all right, fish have to be here. It's going to be there. It's a fact, you know? There's oh, there's yeah. gonna be six pounders here, and there's gonna be one pounders there. I'm gonna avoid that, you know. You, you <laughs> yeah. Do it, you know, it's. I can't even tell you how many times I've been like going down a stretch of bank, and I'm like, that cast is gonna be a fish, and I'm just anticipating it, and it's like, nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's not. And then the one where you're not paying attention, you know, you're you're like, all right, there's nothing here. You get whacked, and you're like, okay, this makes no sense to me. Right. right? It's it's. I, I feel that a lot here in New York. We have glacier lakes, so they're just big bowls oh, of grass. Yeah. Now, we don't have much structure at all besides, you know, the guys who go out, you know, before winter and just yeah. drop rocks off, you know, make their own little rock piles. Yeah. But beyond that, like, there's nothing. So there's a lot of it that doesn't make sense to you on how you're doing. You're just, you're wandering, you know. it's yeah. It can get tough. So it's, fishing is this whole new realm of ver different variables playing into it. And the guys that do well and do well often yeah they're on another planet than the rest of for us sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure it's impressive how consistent some yeah. guys really are and, you know it's just when you get in tune and you do it so often you get in tune with bass behavior i mean it's just for sure you know, second nature yeah and when things so, are rolling too i mean people ride that momentum and keep it going and you know it can be reverse rolls too it can be hard to get out of a rut you know Oh, yeah. and finishes and stuff like that so it's it's a constant roller coaster <laughs> this is everything yeah yeah it's it's funny though how it could even boil down to a simple boat number that you draw yeah because somebody you could have a fire spot that you found and yeah could have really blown it up for you but you drew a number after one guy and he goes there before you do yeah, you know, there's just time of day that half an hour difference if you're in a big boat field or whatever it might be. It can, it can really yeah. make things intense. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. So now, like present day, where are you at with tournaments? What What's your plan moving forward for 2020? Yeah, yeah. Right now, um, I'm entered in all the Bassmaster Opens again. Um, just had the first one. Um, back in like middle of January on the Kissimmee chain down in Florida and I finished 29th in that event so I'm happy with that I can ask I mean I I told myself if I get 40th place I was walking out of there which would be the last check I feel like I won the thing so I'm good <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with it and um, then the next east the so that was the first eastern open the next central open uh, down on Louisville Lake in Texas actually just got not notified that that event is canceled due to um the whole virus deal um so i don't know that's you know it's going to be postponed it'll be rescheduled but just kind of wait and find out what's next with that and kind of just ride out this wave of hearing out what's going to happen with everything because i mean it's so so much unknown but um the plan is to fish all the opens uh with whatever gets rescheduled or anything i plan to make all that work and uh you know try to fish some local tournaments around here um, I'm living around Lake Minnetonka, so um, in Minnesota, and it, yeah, I mean, just kind of fish as much as possible, man. That's the goal. I, I'm picking up a new Skeeter FXR20 um, in the next, I don't know, probably a couple weeks now, just because I'm not in a rush for this next tournament and everything's frozen. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, other than that, it's just kind of wait until the lakes open up and just stay on the water as much as I can learn as much as you can yeah yeah time on the water is everything but uh so is it safe to say that tonka is your home lake then yeah that's where i grew up fishing so um 
I can't say I've had like a crazy history out here or anything like that in some tournaments. It's just kind of where I've been located and grown up fishing and gotten to meet some of the some of the guys that I mean I still look up to now, knowing them more around here because there's some some good fishermen around here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I think so, if you had the stash, everybody would kind of know. Yeah. Yeah, you're going for. <laughs> yeah, for sure. for sure. You got the fighter locks going on. Right <laughs> yeah. Oh man. You know, I think I had my long hair before he did. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. I can't take. We're gonna have to make them. that. We're gonna have to make put that in the uh, the old, the old bio on Instagram. Right. He sees it. Who did it first? No, I'm just kidding. He's been he's been rocking that look. So it's awesome. I don't think I've seen him without that look. I don't know if I'd want to see him without that look. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when I was growing up seeing him around and he had short hair, but um, I can't remember the last time he had short hair. <laughs> oh. See, like, he's one of those guys where, like, you ever try to, like, picture somebody with a different look and you yeah. just kind of look like, I can't see that? Like, you ever look yeah. at somebody and be like, I wonder if they look, like, bald. But, like, him, yeah. like, I, I just don't want to. I can't. I can't. I can't look at him with short hair because it's just it's oh, not him, you know. I know it'd be so different to see him like like shaved stash, just like buzz cut. You'd be like, that is who is this? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, yeah, he could definitely pull up to a ramp, you know, new haircut, shave his face. No one would recognize him. Probably not, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. That would be a, a cool little skit for for Bass to do to have him shave. Like if he ever did that to you know yeah. shave. To have him walk around and try to interview guys and see if they recognize him, <laughs> see if they know who he is, uh, that would be hilarious. Yeah. Oh man, that'd be that'd be ridiculous. I'd like to see that. <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like you guys over in that Minnesota area have a pretty tight knit group of of tournament anglers. After speaking with Rich and then Adam Bartusek's been on the show a bunch, yeah. talking all the time. Uh, yeah. From the sounds of those guys, it, it seems like everybody's for the most part pretty tight knit and. Yeah, it's pretty much and gets out there to enjoy fishing for what it is. For sure, yeah. No, everyone's they, like it's a a decently small circle around here locally that um, everyone's kind of gotten to know each other, and I mean they're all good buddies. Everyone gets along, and yeah, just like you said, I mean we just we just all like to fish. <laughs> so yeah. there's a bunch of fishing pools. <laughs> everyone just wants to whack them, and that's it. Yeah, yep. that's pretty sweet. Yeah, for there's in New York, there's a good mix of that, but at the same time, there's those guys that are out for your throat. It's just oh kinda, yeah, yeah. Sure. You get, I think like, you get those those everywhere. But uh, for sure. So your timeline from getting from starting fishing to becoming a co angler and where you are now. Yep. What was you know was it local derbies and high school derbies and then college or how did how did that go for you? Um. So for me, like, I worked at Gander Mountain all like all throughout high school and I got to meet a buddy who um his name's Carson Sandstrom he got into or he was like just into it like I was and everything and so we we kind of linked up since we were working together in the fishing department we started like hey let's get out fishing we started kind of fishing some local tournaments around and stuff like that just like some Tuesday nighter leagues and like um you know a couple just whatever we could enter and uh from there as I graduated high school I was looking into uh, I went down to Winona State for a year after high school, um, right on the Mississippi River there. And my big goal was to be involved in the college fishing stuff. Uh, I had a like 2000, um, uh, like 18 foot ranger at the time that I, I bought when I was in high school. And um, so I was hoping to fish these college events. And as things kind of got going with my school load and everything, it was really hard for me to justify taking the time off I would need from classes. It was just going to be affecting my grades. I was in a lot of, like, science classes and stuff that uh, with, like, labs. And just, like, if I missed one one week, it just have an automatic, like, effect on my overall grade for the entire year. And so with that, it kind of started driving me nuts. And before I went to college, I fished that first Bassmaster Open. Uh, with my buddy John Figgy on the James River that I missed my high school graduation for. And yep. so that all then throughout my freshman year of college, I mean, he was texting me like, hey, dude, you want to go to this one? Like, can you go to this one? I'm like sitting there just going crazy that I have to tell him no because of yeah. school or whatever. And so as I got into my sophomore year, uh, I really 
honestly, it just got to my head so much of just driving me to the point of going insane that I couldn't be fishing like I wanted to. And so yeah. I made the decision to put school on hold and um, work that whole like fall into winter to save up and fish in some back, so enter some more opens with that same guy, John Figgy. Yeah. And uh, so I fished two divisions, the central and northern division at the time. And uh, that's that's when I I like cashed that one check that I was able to fish the last one. And then the next year in 27, let's see here, 2017, I believe, um, I fished just one division. It might have been 2016. Sorry for going back and forth. But I fished just the Northern Opens. And I finished, I got a check at the first one, missed at the second one. And I got my first top 12 at um, Lake Champlain up in New York. And, uh, so that then kind of gave me a little bit of extra money to think about doing it again the next year. I, I entered two divisions, um, the Northerns again, and then the Southerns to try to diversify myself more. And that was the year that things really turned for me. Um, I, I got... I finished, or like after that year and then leading into the following year in 2018, I won my first tournament um, on Lake Norman. I won as a co-angler. And that tournament was my fifth out of, fifth top 10 out of seven consecutive opens. And so that's when like things really started rolling. And I ended that streak, like, I think I had, like, eight top tens out of 11 consecutive open events. And then I was fishing the FLW Tour as a co-angler that last year, finished fourth in points. And then that really just helped me to justify, like, I was able to save some money. Um, and going into 2019 last year, it was my first year that I was able to make the switch to the front of the boat and um, trying to do things that way. And, and now just... Started the year off decent last year. It didn't quite end how I wanted to, but now this year, I mean, again, couldn't have started it really any better than I could have hoped for. And yeah. just trying to keep it going and keep fishing, man. It's just going to, you know, take a couple of years, but um, next goal is just qualify for like the Elite Series or, you know, the next highest level that I can get to. Heck yeah. yeah. And hoping, you know, that they actually have the rest of the, the tournaments. Yeah. yeah. For real. So now that you're on the front of the boat, being as coming from a co-angler side of things, how does your mindset? How how does that work? I mean, I know obviously things are way different as a co-angler than a boater. Yeah. So how did you try to? I guess are you still just going fishing, or did you kind of change how you, your approach is? Um, I think like naturally my approach which just kind of changed just after like being a co-angler for like the four or five years that I did it. Um, being able to practice with the guys that I traveled with, Josh Douglas, if you've heard his name, he's another yeah. one. Um, yeah. 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 And uh, he, he was a really good mentor for me. You know, we both got to learn a lot together throughout our practice times and just tournaments and whatever. So I think just, learning how to practice a little better was like a big thing for me and then also just fishing thorough like when i was a co-angler i was forced to target things that like i typically probably wouldn't and you learn just over trial and error how many fish there might be in an area so i think just like the whole fishing as a co-angler really taught me to be thorough with my fishing so like a big thing for me is i'll practice and I'll just look for areas that are holding fish. And um, if I can get a bite or two in an area, I'm typically not sticking around trying to catch anything else. And I like to, I'm not a huge one to shake fish off or anything in an area. I like to just kind of find an area that I can break down more in a tournament day. So, um, and kind of going out there, I think it helps me just to have an open mind because I'm not too you know, stuck on trying one thing in an area or I just kind of fish, try my best to fish the moment and just be in those areas that I feel confident that there are some fish. Nice. That, that makes sense. No, yeah, entirely. And 
I guess to coincide with that, now that you have co-anglers, it opens, you have co-anglers now, right? Yep, yep. So, was it FLW, the tour, switched to no co-anglers? That, that was a yep. switch? Okay. Yep. So now that you have co-anglers, is it, how weird is it to have a co-angler? And I guess, do you have, like, I, I have no idea because I'm not, I've never been a boater in these kinds of different situations. You know, how do you approach having a co-angler? You know, are you, I know some guys are me first and try to position the boat where co-anglers don't get a good crack at things or you yeah. know, how do you work with that? I mean, the way I look at it is like, we're, we're both competing. Um, I don't try to like back boat per se or anything like that too, like at least too bad, but I mean, like now that I am fishing as a boater and I gave the pros that I had or that I was in their boats, I, I really tried to give them that respect of, you know, like it's their areas, like they should have first games on anything, you know? And so I, I was trying to work with that and I would like to see that same respect. And I've been very fortunate, like everyone that I've had as a co-angler so far, like they've all been awesome. We've gotten along great. Everything has been, has shown me that respect and, been very cool about everything and, and you know i i don't try to keep them from getting their shots in on things either but you know um like i'll, I'll take my crack at things first and uh, when i feel confident that i did what i thought i needed to do and you know we move on and sometimes in an area where like that's more so if you like fishing along the bank or anything, but sometimes you're in areas that you're just open water and any any cast can be fair game so yeah yeah <laughs> it, you know, it's just situational yeah definitely and it's it's cool like when you see like on social media you see a boater who's like who will talk about their performance but then they go like yeah but my co-angler like smashed him like this kind of thing like yeah that's, that's, so to me that's pretty cool yeah uh, totally it's different things like that but, yeah exactly where guys are like all right i sacked him up pretty good you know and i'm gonna hold off a little bit so i have fish for tomorrow but like, yeah. dude, you're behind me. You go have, you know, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Well, heard stories of co-anglers being like, you know, you're in, you're in first. You have con you're in contention to win, and they just don't yeah. even finish the whole day. They're totally. like, I'm not going to win your chances. Totally. To that, to me, like that speaks volumes. You know, absolutely. Uh, those are the stories you, you enjoy hearing about. Um, yeah. But have you ever heard any like horror stories of co-anglers from like boaters, or horror stories of boaters to co-anglers? Yeah, like, share. Uh, like, I, I'm trying to, like, I've just heard, like, stories of, like, you know, someone, let's just say, casting at, like, a stump or something they see and then missing one, like the boater did. And then it's, like, the co-angler will, like, throw up there when they're, like, re-rigging their bait or something and then catch, like, an eight, like, a six-pounder or something. And, uh -huh. like, that's just kind of, like, ouch. Yikes. I don't know, you know, but... Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything too crazy, I guess, but it's just more so like stories like that where sometimes it, you know, it, it's just the competition. I think it's the best yeah. of people sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, so, come on, man. Like, yeah. you know, like ESPN segment, the, the come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> failures. That's, uh, I think I, I've, I've seen it shared to me a couple times, but like when a co angler smashes them and your boater blanks. That's yeah. to me in my mind. That's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I've heard some stories, and I mean, it's just like, like, it, it, it's. I've heard stories where it's just like, they. It just is one of those days where it just happened like that. Like, Colin yeah. didn't do anything wrong. Boater didn't do anything wrong. It was just like. I've heard same bait scenarios and someone with zero and then the co angler came in with like twenty seven pounds or something and it's just like Oh my god. That's I mean, that's just heartbreaking, but what can you do at some point? It's just yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that same bait getting beat scenario, I relate to that. I mean yeah. I think I've so told this story a couple of times on this show, but it's my buddy now, we're on Lake Erie. Yeah. And we were, we were offshore and we were drifting a certain stretch that we thought was really good. We had the yeah. same tube, same tube style, same tube weight, same yeah. line. He was on the right side of the boat. I was on the left. We had, it sounded like rod placement was different. We were both just holding our rods below. Same amount of line out. 
And yeah. dude, like, he's catching fives and sixes, and I'm catching threes and fours, and I can't think for the life of me what the hell's going on. We switch sides because we're both laughing about this. Yeah. Which is a five and a half, and I keep catching threes, and I'm like, okay, this no is way. stupid. <laughs> like, it's, it's a curse. It's just a curse. Yeah, I, I don't even get it sometimes. It's just, that's fishing. It really is. <laughs> Dude, I was just like, you know, like, I was like sitting there because we're going through boulders, and I'm like, when you get to boulders, are you hopping it up like I am? And he goes, yeah. And he's like, I'm like, all right, how many hops are you doing? And like, he's like, yeah. telling me all the things he's doing. I'm like, I'm I'm being creative with different things. I'm like, this is just stupid. Like, I can't even find a five or six. This don't like me. It just wasn't my yeah. day. That's sometimes what happens. It's just not your day. Like, yeah. <laughs> things just don't click. But That's it is true. what it is. Yeah. Me, but uh, one thing I wanted to bring up too that I saw on your Instagram, we spoke about it a little bit. Is uh, you were teaching high school classes for fishing. Talk a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. Well, so. Um... There's this company called Omnia Fishing has been kind of becoming, you know, a, a lot bigger around here. They're locally based right now. And uh, I've known some guys working for them now for a few years. And they they put on this high school, like, fishing clinic um, in Chaska, Minnesota. And, you know, they, they just kind of reached out to me to come speak to, like, some high school classes. Or, so, like, it's a high school-only based event. So, I mean... Like, there's a few guys there that we're all doing, like, some seminars. We just kind of all picked a topic that we yeah. felt, like, were one of our favorites or something like that. And um, we just kind of did these, like, smaller seminars in these uh, classrooms that everyone could attend and do whatever. But, uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I like to take that time because, I mean, I'm, I'm not that much older than, like, the high schoolers. But I, I know when I was at that point, like just to be able to come learn as much as you could is like so fun and, and they're the future of the sport you know they, they really are and so i think i like to try to give back to that generation coming up and um you know just show my love for the sport because i think sometimes that kind of passion can be contagious to other people and um yeah any any kind of thing that i can pay back to the sport because it's done a lot for me I, I try to just do those opportunities as most best as i can yeah, hundred percent. And you know the people that show up for that are there to listen. Like they're, they're totally. not there to you know fiddle around on their phone. It's not like actual high school where no one pays attention. <laughs> totally. Kind of, um, they're there to actually listen, and they they'll value what you say. So it, it kind totally. it gives you all the more reason to go there and help those people out. Exactly. You know, it's, and like you said, they're the future of the sport. That's one thing that confuses me about some people, especially, you know, like, when they show up to boat ramp or you're coming in or whatever, and you just, like, I've had even recently, I just ask a, a simple question. of just like, hey, man, how'd you do today? And then they just pretty much just, like, scold you. And it's like, yeah. do you not want anybody to do this? In the f like, it's yeah, I know, yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. It can be intimidating, you know. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. I just, yeah, I, I don't think there's any need to be, like, that kind of way. I just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. the sport's changing all the time anyway. Like, things oh are constantly changing, and uh, I, I like to try to educate the best I can. I mean, I'm by no means any expert, but I, I'm learning every day, too, and, you know, I like to share what I do learn when I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's, that's part of the reason why I do this is because, like, one, I oh, love to learn. I love to talk fishing if I'm not actually fishing and like whoever listens, I hope they can take something from it. You know, that kind of deal. Exactly. Uh, that's why I do the, the YouTube where it's my YouTube channel is basically me fishing to learn. But yeah. also if I can teach someone, probably not teaching the greatest, but like if I can <laughs> teach someone, you know, all the more, you know, all the more reason. Um, oh, yeah. But I mean, there's certain points where it's like, yeah, I love the next best thing to me than catching a fish is watching somebody else catch a fish sure. um, you know maybe not as a boater watching a co-angler catch that <laughs> pounder, but yeah um, you know like i was at cayuga lake up here in new york and yeah. uh, i was out in my kayak with these two high school kids per perfect for the, the scenario uh yeah. two high school kids that were fishing in a park and they were just throwing you know senkos or whatever and you know most guys that i shouldn't say most guys that that sounds bad because it's not true there are certain guys that will go around and they will kind of 
block them from cer fishing certain areas, I guess. Yeah. Because I've had it done to me. It's because I'm more speaking from experience. And, yeah. Um, I could see, I was standing up, I could see everything. And they're obviously on the shore, so they can't see out much. So I'm just telling them, I'm like, hey, dude, you know, there's a three-pounder swimming over there. And they're throwing Sankos, like, perfect timing. He's yeah. like, where, where? And I'm telling him, like, right over there, like, cast 20 yards in front of me. Yeah. And he casts over that. And it's the coolest thing. I wish I had, like, my GoPro footage, like, underwater. Yeah. Because watching the bass go where he cast it. And you know what I'm talking about. That was the oh, coolest yeah, dude, that's, He's, like, that's... freaking out. Yeah, he's, oh. like, it's awesome. Like, that, that, that moment, like, like, exciting feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, like, sure. st stuff in line with that. Like, when I was working at the Classic, you know, watching our pros talk to these little kids. And yeah. it's, like, come back. And I'm, like, dude, that kid's going to be hooked for the rest of his life. For sure. You're going to watch sure. the kid get up on the elite stage 25 years from now, and you're the reason why. You know, it's for sure. Stuff like totally. that. Totally. But, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, like, one thing I've tried to pay attention to is, you know, the guys like um, Mike Iaconelli, Brandon Polonick, like you see them in a public setting and something that they are so good at is giving every single individual their time. And oh. looking at that, I mean, that's just like, like exactly what you just said. That's going to stick with that person forever. And they're a fan of whoever, you know, Mike Iaconelli or Brandon Polonick or whoever for life then, you know, like, yeah always going to be your fan just because of that moment and um, i think that's something interesting to note you know it's something i i, I, I strive to be like someday <laughs> hopefully yeah yeah so. yeah and that was that was a big struggle for me at the classic because i was working it i was working with douglas and yeah. the team that i was working with those guys had been to all of it they're friends with all these different pros in the industry Sure. And, like, they're walking around, and they're, like, coming up, talking like they're just buddies. And I'm sitting there struggling because, like, I need to be a professional. But at the same time, I'm sitting there, like, BPs and one of my favorites uh, looking sure. up to you. And I'm sitting there, he's coming up, and he's introduced, shakes his hand and everything. And I'm sitting there, like, fanboying in my mind. Yeah. Like, no, good to meet you, you know, that kind of thing, talking that, talking fishing or whatever. And I'm sitting there, like, just trying to hold it all together. Cause I'm like, I'm, it's the kid in me. I've never been to a classic, so it was like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. So oh, that was, for sure. it's, yeah, it's, I feel you. I yeah. feel you on that. Yeah. Cool. So looking forward though. Yep. Quick point. Cause I wrote, I keep writing stuff down because I have yeah. terrible memory. Um, <laughs> you, you brought up Ike and Ellie. If you go, I don't know if you looked at it yet, but Alton Jones Jr. His Instagram, his story. I don't know if you saw, um, if you have your phone here, you should totally look it up right now. Um, like you can hear is Elton Jones has his GoPro running, and you hear it's it says when you know you're fishing by Ike and Ellie, and all you hear some guy yell in the background. Oh. It's just it's Ike because <laughs> he had caught like that that seven pounder or something. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I, I messaged Elton, I'm like, dude, how far away was he from you? And he goes, he goes, dude, I kid you not, like a half mile. You could hear him that clear. <laughs> that's <laughs> so screaming. awesome. Like, yeah. that's hilarious. You want to talk raw motion? That's it's like, sure. yeah, sure. it's awesome. I love it. I love so, it. So, so moving forward though, 2020 yeah. future plans for the next years is the elite series. That's, that's the, the end goal here. Yeah. Um, right now that's, that's the goal for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to force nothing on it. I am just kind of taking it as it goes. I'm just, you know, is, Every year that I can still be competing in, you know, the opens or whatever um, is a, a good thing in my eyes that I can just, you know, keep going and uh, just take each tournament as its own and, you know, go try to win every single one and just kind of yeah. see where it all lands from there. Because I think, if, you know, I just want to go try my hardest and, and learn. And, you know, I'd like to think that when it's my time, it will be. And, um it's kind of yeah that's the goal elite series on my mind <laughs> yeah sure. pretty much just like you said yeah just learning and just you know getting after each tournament if it happens it happens i like that as long as like sure. as long as it makes sense though right like financially and everything yeah but yeah that's so, that's yeah. awesome i feel like i'm listening to hank cherry's interview right now because you're spitting all <laughs> the same stuff he had <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's literally what he said and he goes he yeah. goes i didn't force any tournament you know if it happens it happens it's my time it's my time yeah that's and I mean, all you can do is go out there and just try your best, and you know, just stay yeah. open-minded, to learn and evolve with the sport as it is. And um, yeah, you know, that's just it. It's 
this takes time. I'm just trying to keep at it because in the end, it's all I want to do anyway. So, you know, whether I'm at that level or not, um, no matter where I get in my career, I'm always going to want more. So I'm just trying my best to like enjoy the entire process of being where I'm at now and um, just trying to do the best that I can. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Get, the, get the mindset of a, a classic champion. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Sounds like Hopefully you're someday. Like, it might mean you have quite a roller coaster, but I mean, at least at some point you might win a classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the dream, man. That's the dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited to see you go go down that path. So, Thanks, you know, you got a lot of supporters. You know, it sounds like, you know, talking to Adam, he's the one that uh, actually pointed me in your direction to have you yeah, on. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah. So, it sounds like a support group back in uh, in Minnesota. So, yeah. I've got, I've got a, I've got a really good friend group um, in every which way that, that saying. So, it's, uh, it's been awesome, and uh, yeah, I've known Adam for years, so he's he's a really good guy too, and we've had yeah. some fun times. <laughs> uh, I bet, yeah, <laughs> sounds like <laughs> he's he's a good guy. Um, yeah, so we're gonna transition to this. Uh, I do like a closing segment where I ask two questions, and my fun questions I call them. Cool. Uh, before we do that, is there any you know pro staff you want to shout out? Any certain people you want to shout out? Social media, people can follow you uh yeah i mean all my social media tags are uh it's just all at chad smith fishing um on facebook instagram i got my website chadsmithfishing.com um yeah it's all pretty much that um, the, uh, instagram and facebook are probably my two you know main focus media outlets right now um hoping to do some more youtube stuff in the future um again that'll be probably chad smith fishing and Stuff like that, but that's all to come, and I'll be sharing anything on those those main outlets. So, uh, otherwise, I mean, I'm just excited to get the lakes unthawed and go and pick up my brand new Skeeter FXR20 from Warner's Dock over in New Richmond, Wisconsin. They just recently became a Skeeter dealer. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm I'm just super excited about that to begin with. Um, got a couple more weeks, and I should be bringing that puppy home. Um, yeah, otherwise, I mean, just I've got an awesome support group, you know, Sims Fishing, Daiwa, Rods and Reels, uh, Featherwick. They're, they're like, a, like a media kind of company that um, they've got, like, a really cool core group of people that, um, like, all just, just like what we were talking about, they all come together because they love doing one thing. And uh, Featherwick's kind of showcasing that whole thing. So that's, that's pretty cool. They just came out with their new, uh, their first part of this. Um, this uh kind of cinematic um movie i guess you could say uh it's called water world so that's pretty cool that's something to check out on their social media and but yeah i mean other than that i'm just grateful for all the support i've had through the years and just looking to continue things and grow those relationships more so heck yeah man well all that all your channels and everything will be linked down below and we'll link that uh, we'll have to figure out where that that video that featherwork video is we'll have to link that yeah. down too yeah so that's, totally. that's pretty awesome heck yes all right man well these last two questions are you ready for them because then they, yeah i think as ready as i'm gonna fail them or they get stumped and they think about them for a while i had yeah. mikey balls on i tell you, i say this all the time i had mikey balls on he's like the sixth episode and he swore at me because of this question so <laughs> i don't know if you're ready all right all right bring it on <laughs> all right first question is if you can invite any three people past or present to sit down, have dinner, to pick their brain, who would they be? They don't have to be fishing. It could be anybody. To pick their brain. Huh. <laughs> There's the stump. All right. All right. No, sorry. Oh, that was good than I thought. Okay. One. I don't know. I just kind of thought of one. So we'll kind of just we'll ride this as we can. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of, like, Gary Vanderchuk or Gary yep. G on social yep. media. He's someone I've always just kind of been like, I'd like to sit down and just straight up talk to him about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, just about life in general and also maybe any advice you'd have for, for you know, proceeding in any which way. <laughs> yeah. Um, man. I... I've been talking to Brandon Polnick about this a little bit, but I'd like to just pick his brain. He's been someone I've looked up to a lot in the sport. Um, 
I think he's doing a lot of big things in the sport that I've been watching for a while, trying to just like be mindful of the route he's taken through his career and all that kind of stuff. So that's someone I definitely like to talk with. Um, man, I feel like I'm going to miss someone that I'll think about later and just be like, it's all the you know, time. Like, I, I can say you. that. Yeah. Some people message afterwards, be like, oh, dude, I should have said this. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, that's that's a good question, though. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like someone like really famous that is like not with us anymore that I feel like I'd really like that, but I can't think of anyone at the top of my head right now. Paul Walker was a big one that people said too. That would be a cool one. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Um, Bruce Lee. Bruce. Oh wow. Okay, it's our first Bruce Lee on the show. <laughs> Heck yeah, <laughs> probably Bruce Lee. <laughs> All right. Why? Why the lack of being able to think of someone else? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's an interesting one. Bruce uh, Lee. He's had a lot of powerful, just like mindsets that have just, you know, I don't know. It's kind of old school, but it's, it's, he's someone I'd like to. Yeah, it's inspired sure. a lot of people and kind of how they, they go about their business. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I like, <laughs> I like yeah. that. Bruce Lee, BP, Gary V. It's a, it's a power three right there. Yeah. yeah. Dang, that's kind of like, that almost rhymed, man. <laughs> Bruce Lee, BP, and Gary V. <laughs> Can't beat that three. That's, oh, that's like awesome. That. That even, huh. Right on. Oh. Yeah, I know. I guess that's my three. <laughs> yeah. Can't complain with that three. But I guarantee you, as you get off this, you're like, oh, damn. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee Everybody, you. I do it myself. Um, yeah. So, last question. Super yeah. simple, straightforward, favorite fishing memory. Favorite fishing memory ever. Um, probably when I was like, I don't know how old I was, but I mean, there's, there's a lot. I mean, I could say like winning my tournament and stuff like that, but like, just to keep it not like that, <laughs> uh, when I was like really little at my cabin, just went like, I'd be fishing like all day and my parents would have to like come get me to come eat dinner and stuff just like way down the bank or whatever it'd just be but my my fa my cabin is like kind of an interesting setup there's like seven cabins and they're all like family generation like related and so like our dock and then we have like other cabins where people will be on their docks and I'd, I'd go fishing off like all the docks but um i don't know i was probably like four or something and I have a picture of it somewhere, but I, I like all these like family members were out fishing off this dock and then they like called me over to come fishing and I, I, I walk up and I just had like some like big, I don't know, some kind of a finesse worm of some sort and I just cast it out as far as I could off the dock and uh, I caught like a five and a half pound bass like first cast. And just walked up on the stock, and I just remember everyone just like freaking out about it and whatever. So I think that was kind of like that was really cool, like just to walk up and do that kind of thing. I, I've had a couple moments where it's been like that when I was younger, but uh, I don't know, just those kinds of moments just like stick with me a lot because it's something I've just loved doing my whole life so much. <laughs> yeah, just walk off the dock and just drop the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been <laughs> classes in session. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Yeah. Well, like I said, everything's going to be linked down below. Um, so people listening, watching, whatever, can go follow you, keep up with you on your, your roads, the elites. Sure. Uh, I'm excited to keep up with you, to watch you, you know, on that road, too. Um, I know Adam as well. He needs to be on that road, so watch out for him. Man. I was kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a that's a powerful duo going to the heading for the elites. But um, 
Yeah, I'm pretty excited to uh, to watch you progress, though. So I want to say thank you again for coming on, you know, taking yeah. the time of your day. Um, so thank I mean, you, Bailey, anytime. for having me on. I, yeah, I mean, of course. Fun. And yeah, I love doing stuff like this. So I'm, I'm happy oh, that we got in touch about it. You are always welcome on the show. If you want to just talk about the most random stuff, I will come <laughs> on here. We'll record something. Sounds you know, good. If you, people want to listen to it or not, uh, you're always welcome, man. So I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Heck yeah. All right. Um, well, I hope you uh, stay healthy. Stay away from yeah. this whole flu thing going on. I hope your season doesn't get canceled on you. Yeah, uh, we'll see how it all goes. But, yeah, you stay safe. Wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see where it all goes, but dude, thank you again, and let's keep in touch. Sounds good, man. Hope your uh, legs open up soon. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> but all right, man. we'll talk, talk to you soon. later. Bye. So I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast we just did with Chad. Uh, it was really awesome to have him on, hear his story. Um, he talked a lot about being a co-angler, uh, what that is like, and the different stages he took to get to being an open angler that he is now. Uh, so it's pretty awesome and excited to to follow along in his uh, his adventure, his journey, his road to the Elite Series. And uh, if you guys if you guys could go down to the description, follow him on everything, show him some support, show him some love. Uh, I'll be rooting for him uh, for going forward, uh, and hopefully hopefully he makes the Elite Series um, if this this virus <laughs> doesn't pretty much cancel everything. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you're staying safe. Hope you're healthy. Like Chad said, wash your hands. Stay clean. Stay healthy. Do what you can. You know, tell your family you love them. And uh, if you guys aren't already, subscribe to the Igbert Outdoors YouTube channel. Um, if you don't want to listen to this on YouTube, uh, if you're not already listening from a podcast app, you can find us on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, the Angler app, uh, and many more. So I appreciate you guys for watching, listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.